Hey guys, today I have an ASUS uh, TP500L series ASUS Transformer Flipbook. Today I'm going to clone the old hard drive onto a brand new crucial solid state drive, a two and a half inch SATA drive, using my trusty little USB adapter. Then we're gonna install it inside and hopefully have a much faster computer. Let's get to it. All right guys, Dale here, how's it going? Like I said, I got a, about a five, six year old Asus laptop. It's a Transformer Flipbook. It's a 15.6 inch, two in one basically, touch screen and all that good stuff. It's the TP500L series and it's kind of slow. It's got a Core i3, I think it's like a fourth generation Core i3 in it. Not a lot of data on it, but he's using about 80 gigabytes worth of his current hard drive. It's only a 500 gig hard drive. So in this video, I am going to do two things. I'm gonna clone his existing drive onto the new two and a half inch SATA solid state drive. I'm gonna use a USB adapter and do it right through the USB port. Then I'm gonna use the free software from Crucial. It's Crucial's Acronis version of cloning software. You have to have a, a Crucial drive in order to use their software, but it is Acronis. And I've already downloaded it and installed it on this computer. It was free, and I'll put a link down below where you can directly go and download it if you have a crucial drive of any kind, either an M.2 or a two and a half inch. This, in this case, we're using a two and a half inch SATA SSD. So I got, and I'm using a USB, just a simple USB to a SATA adapter, two and a half inch SATA adapter here. And I'll have a link down below where you can get these. They only cost like eight, ten bucks. So we just simply hook that up to the hard drive just like that, or the hard drive, the solid state drive, sorry. And we're gonna plug it into a USB port on the side here. And when you first plug that in, because it is a new drive, if you go over here to the start menu, right click and go to disk management, computer's not the fastest. Then when this comes up, just cancel it if you want to do this. You're going to see your drive in here. It's unallocated, it's just empty. That's fine. It's supposed to look like that. And then once we run the uh, launch, the Acronis True Image for Micron, they call it. Micron is crucial. Um, we can start the clone. But typically, I would clone these on my cloning station here at here at the store because we do a lot of them every single day. But I wanted to do this video to show you how to use the Acronis from Crucial to do it. And then when I'm all done getting it cloned onto the new SS, the new SATA SSD here, going to shut it down, open it up, install the new SSD, boot it up. We should be set and have a much faster computer. All right, guys. So I got like I said, I've already downloaded the the free Acronis version from Crucial's website, and I'll, again, I'll have a link down below where you can download it. And here's the icon right here. I'm just going to double click it to launch the program. Of course, hit yes on UAC. And depending on the speed of your computer to begin with, this cloning process you know, is going to vary just depending on how much data you, you got to transfer and whatnot. So when it first opens up, we're going to go right up here in the corner and click on clone disk. We're just going to initialize and I always just choose the automatic, the first one on the list up here, where it says automatic. Just hit next. And our source drive is going to be right here, the Toshiba, the one that's currently in it. And that you at the top it says source. Then you're going to click on next. And it's going to gather information. It's got to be patient through this process. All right, guys, once it goes through, now the next step, it comes up where it says select the target disk. Obviously, it's going to be the only one left right here, the crucial, just two, not initialize. Select that. Go down on the bottom here and click on next. It's going to read it, gather some more info. I 
I have other videos on using the Macrium Reflex 7, which is totally free. It does a pretty good job. A little more technical, but it's pretty easy to use. And as you can see, we're, we're um, cloning down to a smaller drive, which is totally fine. Um, it does do that. We've got a 500 gig going to 250, but it's going to allocate all the space here. As you can see, this is a summary of what it's going to look like when we're done. So the next step here is just to click on proceed down here. And it's probably going to want us to reboot and do the clone outside of the Windows environment. It's not uncommon at all. It really depends on how many apps and programs and basically how busy your computer is in the background. And if it tells you it's got to restart, that's totally fine. It'll, it'll clone outside of Windows and then it'll come back and away you go. And usually it takes a minute or several seconds to make that determination. I love Acronis. I use it here in my store. Of course, I have the paid commercial version. I use it every day, all day, literally. I can clone a lot of drives quite quickly. These free versions that you get with the, from the manufacturers, whether it's A-Data, uh, Kingston, uh, Western Digital, of course, and Crucial, and there's other ones. Most of the majority of them use Acronis, but it's their own proprietary version that requires you have one of their drives in the loop so to speak. Samsung uses their own. I think Corsair has their own software as well. But some of them that some of them that used to be free, like the mini tool partition wizard, um, to clone, well recently they they became not free. You have to actually upgrade what they call their pro or you know bigger versions in order to do the actual, actual cloning. But some of the free ones will still do simple things like, you know, you can manage your partitions and do some simple backups and things like that. As well as, you know, Cronus does a lot of that stuff as well. But it looks like it's gonna not require a reboot, which is nice. So basically this will take a little bit of time. It's still calculating. And again, once the clone's all done, I'll shut down the laptop, open it up, and I'll show you how to do that, and swap out the drives, and then after that, i got to get all the updates, because this, this laptop is still running the old 1803 edition of Windows 10. The, the customer hasn't used it in quite some time, but he wants to start using it all the time now. And with an SSD in it, even though it's a SATA, it's going to be a whole lot faster. Putting a new SATA drive of any type or an SSD drive of any type in any computer is the easiest, least expensive thing you can do to an older computer to make it really fast. SSDs are just, I've had such good luck, luck with them, they're so reliable. And they're very affordable these days, very affordable. So I'm gonna, let this get going here and I'll come back when it's almost done so you can sh see how it finishes up. You can see we're plugged in over here into the USB port. Right, I'll be back shortly. Alright guys, you can see it's just about finished there. Um, clone went really good. Took just a little under an hour. And remember, we did this inside a Active Windows. So, um, a couple of other little tips. Whenever you're cloning, it's always a good idea to go in and disable all your power management so the computer's not going into sleep mode during the clone. Maybe you want to open up your task manager and disable all your background programs. Just type in, you know, MS config. Keep an eye on that, sorry guys. <clears throat> the less less stuff that's running in the background, the better. It'll just more opportunity to have a, a better clone. Go to your startup tab, open your task manager, and just disable all this stuff. You can turn it all back on later, except anything that's Acronis related, obviously. Turn off all your non-Microsoft services. 
and then reboot you can re-enable all your stuff again or try it without doing that you can see I didn't I didn't do that and my clone looks like it's gonna go just fine you can see the disk was successfully cloned so now I'm gonna click on OK and go up here and exit the program just go down here and disconnect it from the USB port now we're going to install the new two and a half inch SATA SSD. It's an MX500 series, 250 gig. These are I use these a lot. These are pretty snappy little drives for an older computer like this. It's going to make a huge difference. I said this is a TP500L series, transformer flipbook. All right, so I'm going to shut down the computer. And again, once I get the new drive in, I still got a lot of updating I have to do on his windows get him up the 2004 edition and all the updates and things like that so let's go ahead and get it opened up and get the new drive in there all right guys I already removed all the screws off the bottom of this laptop I didn't want to bore you with that they're all the same length so don't have to worry about that um, once the screws are we're going to remove the entire bottom pan these come up usually pretty easy I like to use a little spudger tool like this. I'll have a link down below where you can buy these. Buy a bag of these for a couple of bucks online. <clears throat> so what I like to do is just get it in the seam where the, where the dark meets the silver here. Just get your spudger tool in there and just kind of work it around. We'll start back in the corner over here. Sorry you can't see, but actually I'm going to use my whole one. Just got to be patient. Don't sticking screwdrivers in there that's going to ruin your day got to find a spot where I can get it started good bear with me guys that was a little wear out there we go once you get it started just kind of slide it along You can hear it popping, which is a good thing. Put a little pressure up on it. I've opened many of these up, but you don't want to just rip it off. It's going to break something. Be patient. Start on this other side over here. And by the way, people make comments about my, my bench tops. I got like six of them in my shop. They're very padded, they're anti-static, they're very soft, they're designed for this type of work when you slide it around. It's very convenient, very easy. We do a lot of stuff here every day. It's a high production place, so to speak. So we just have to be able to move quickly. So don't worry about me scratching anything. I try my best. <clears throat> Sometimes you're just a little stubborn in here. You get broke loose. Come on. Alright, this one's being stubborn. So like I said, you gotta be patient. Don't force it. Grab my little tool here. It's right by the speaker, so I wanna be careful. <clears throat> Didn't poke anything, don't worry. So you just kind of jiggle it and it should come off. Sometimes along the back here, you have to get your tool in here and just kind of gently pry it up here, just like that. You can see we got it off just fine. <clears throat> so inside here, you can see we have a RAM module here, we have our battery over here, our hard drive is over in this area right here. There's going to be four screws that we're going to remove to put the new 2.5 inch SATA SSD. Where you got your fan, your Wi-Fi card, your keyboard connector. Don't really need to do anything in there, but I am going to disconnect the battery here. It's connected to, um, to the motherboard right here. Actually, it's right here. This is simple. Um, there's a little metal clip. There's a little metal clip right here. The battery connector has to slide back towards the fan. I use the tip of a very hard plastic tool here to slide it back. 
not too hard, just enough so you can lift the connector off here, just like that. You can see it lifts straight up off the motherboard. Okay? Sorry guys, it's towards the end of the day and as always I'm a little pooped. This is like my seventh or eighth one of these I've done today. Alright, so I'm going to get the hard drive out and I'm using a number zero magnetic tip Phillips screwdriver with a good clean tip on it. That's the same screwdriver you use to take out all the screws on the bottom cover. Number zero pretty much works great. small little screws get them out of your way the hard drive is going to should just slide right back just like that slides back out of the SATA connector there and we got to get it out of the caddy and there's two screws on each side holding the hard drive in there for that I like to use my cordless screwdriver a little bit easier Taking these screws out this way for me. Like I said, the hard drive is in there like that. So we're going to put the new solid state drive in the same way, obviously. It's just going to mount inside the, inside the caddy, just like that. And this motherboard does not have an M2 slot of any kind. This is kind of pre-M2 being standard. These screws don't have to be super tight just to hold everything in place. We'll see if that's going to fit in there without using the filler, the spacer filler. It should. Sometimes I've had to use, the, use those. Crucial sends you a little spacer thing here that you can just self adhesive on the back side of the drive, but you don't have to use it. I'm not going to. I kind of used one here, but I usually can't get these off of one piece, but I'll try. <clears throat> yeah, remember, we're taking out a mechanical drive, and this is a lot of this is for anti vibration with the solid state drive. We're not going to have that issue. But if you can get it back on there, go for it. that Acronis cloning software works very well very reliable and 
And I have other videos on, on cloning with some of the other software, the mini tool partition with, with partition wizard, the paid version, and the Macrium Reflex 7, the free edition, that one you can clone with. It's a little bit more technical, but not too bad. I got videos on, on using those ones as well. All right, so we're going to reconnect our battery carefully. Just push it straight down, not too hard. We're going to slide our little metal clip back over it. That goes out all the week. <clears throat> there it goes. That's pretty much it. Cover it back over. I always wait to seal it up with all the screws until I know everything is good to go. Save me a little time in case I have to open it back up. We'll go ahead and plug in my power cord. Alright, so let's hit the power button on the side here. And I might do a quick Disc checking, that's very normal. Might not. It sure booted a lot quicker. Like I said guys, I got a lot of tuning up to do on this. I gotta get the latest version of Windows Windows 10, clean out all the junk. Because there's a bunch of it on here. He hasn't used this for a while, but he's gonna start using it on a regular basis. So there, we had a good clone. Um, Check out some more of my videos. Make sure you subscribe. I would appreciate it. And thanks for watching. Have a great day.